As we study the events of the Permian, we can't neglect what the continents are doing. A process started in the Carboniferous, the formation of the supercontinent Pangaea, has continued and is reaching its conclusion. Can you tell us a bit about this process? The late Paleozoic era certainly is an interesting time for the continents. The movement of continents, because these crustal plates are essentially floating on the semi-solid molten rock of the mantle. These movements occasionally create supercontinents, where the masses of continents fuse together. There have been a number of these in the Precambrian, but here at the end of the Paleozoic, another one is forming. The southern continents of Africa, South America, India, Australia, and Antarctica have long been united, along with some parts of southern North America and southern Europe, to form a great supercontinent known as Gondwana. Also, the northern areas, the beginnings of North America and Europe and Asia, are also starting to fuse together. In the middle of the Paleozoic, in the Carboniferous, these northern and southern land masses began to fuse so that what is now Africa and North America began to meet, and this eliminated the seaway which connected them. This process wasn't complete until the Permian, and so the fusion of the northern land masses and the southern land masses forming an Appalachian mountain chain where there was once a seaway was a process which took an enormous period of time beginning in the Carboniferous and ending in the Permian. What have been the effects of the formation of this supercontinent on Permian creatures? I don't know if you can imagine how great the effect of this formation of Pangaea has been on marine life. Prior to the fusion of the northern and southern continents, there was an ocean, or at least at the end a seaway, in the tropical waters separating this. So we had shallow water which was nice and warm. Imagine the marine life. But then when these continents fused, this seaway disappeared. Not only was this a loss to those marine organisms living here, but this then affected ocean currents. It affected how much water will spread over land to cause rainfall. This had a dramatic effect on all of the aspects of water on the planet. The temperature of the ocean, the movement of ocean currents, the evaporation of water which will fall on land as rain. So much of this has been changed. And so this is certainly a great challenge for the marine life to overcome. The formation of this supercontinent is certainly affecting life on land. Gone are those great coastal swamps producing all of that coal. And instead we have a new mountain range with enormous mountains. Some are calling them the Appalachians. The middle of this supercontinent is extremely dry, so it no longer gets the evaporation of water from that seaway. And so there is a giant desert forming in the middle of it. That's all right for some organisms such as me. Pereosaurs are one of the groups which can adapt and live in this desert. So this is certainly affecting terrestrial life.